Hey everybody, Kiru Paul here. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be covering another Spanish construction that triggers the subjunctive. Describing nonspecific items in clauses introduced by K. Now believe me, that sounds a lot more difficult than it actually is, so I'm going to walk you through it. Ready? I want a chair. Quiero una silla. Not too hard yet, right? I want a comfortable chair. Quiero una silla cómoda. I want a chair that is comfortable. Quiero una silla que sea cómoda. And there it is. Sea is in the subjunctive mood. It comes from the verb ser, to be. So, why is it there? Well, it's just what I told you. We're talking about a non-specific item. We're talking about a chair. Not the chair, not a specific chair. A chair. It may or may not exist. It probably exists because, well, pretty sure I find a lot of chairs comfortable or would, but this type of construction is going to trigger the subjunctive every single time. So I'm saying I want a chair that. The that is that K. Now some viewers are like, okay, so anytime I see K, I should be thinking subjunctive. Mm, no. You have to look for the trigger before the K, and this is a trigger, non-specific item. But let's say I'm talking about a specific item. Let's just make a very small change to our sentence. I want the chair that is comfortable. Quiero la silla que es cómoda. You see, we're back to the indicative, also known as the plain old present tense, right? Es. And why? Because we're talking about a specific chair. And that's why it doesn't work just to say, okay, if I see K, then I know I'm going to use the subjunctive because, well, that's not true. You have to look for that trigger. If you've been following the series, subjunctive triggers, and you haven't been just skipping around, you may have noticed a familiar pattern here, okay? So we do have our subject change. In the first sentence, I want, right? I am the subject. And then we have the word K, again, something to watch. And in the second clause, we have a different subject. So in this case, I'm saying is comfortable. What is comfortable? I'm comfortable? No, the chair. So the chair is the subject of the second clause. If that second clause is describing a non-specific item, I know the subjunctive needs to go there. Before I give you the next example, I want to give you a little bit of new vocabulary. In a couple of videos recently, I talked about the mega verb dar and how it can mean all kinds of things when you use different prepositions or in different, you know, expressions. So I'm going to give you one of those that I like right now, and it is dar a. And it means to face, but not like I'm facing something. It's used more with immovable objects, like your house is facing the park or my window is facing the garden, that sort of thing. So let's work that in to what we're talking about today. I want a house that faces the park. First part's pretty easy, right? Quiero una casa. I want a house. That. What are we going to stick in there? Que. Already I'm thinking, okay, is this my subjunctive trigger? Am I talking about a non-specific house? Am I talking about that house or that house or a house? Subjunctive trigger, right? So we're going to use our new expression, dar a, but we're going to have to conjugate it in the subjunctive. Now, if you're having trouble conjugating into the subjunctive, I have a video for that. Um, this series really focuses on when to do it, all right? Also, if you're having trouble conjugating, you can always go to wordreference.com, look up any verb, look up here at the top, and click on conjugación to see all of the conjugations, including the subjunctive. All right, back to our English sentence. I want a house that faces the park. Quiero una casa que dé al parque. So, dar becomes de, it's in the subjunctive. And if you're wondering why it's al parque, it's because, what was our expression? Dar a. And when you have a in front of el, el being the and not he, the one with he has an accent over it, the a and the el meld together and become al. I want the house that faces the park. I bet you can do this one pretty quickly since you just saw that one. You want to take a stab at it and then we'll talk about it? Sure, go ahead. You got time. <laughs> Quiero la casa que da el parque. Did you get it? See, dar is back in the indicative, also known as the plain old present tense. We still have al parque for the same reason. It's a piece of cake, right? So in this one, we're talking about a specific house, that specific house, no subjunctive trigger. This construction works really well with the Spanish verb buscar, which means to look for. So if you're like, que buscas? What are you looking for? Que buscas? 
I'm looking for a house that faces the park. I bet you can do that one pretty easily because we basically just conjugated that, right? Busco una casa que dé al parque. Non-specific house, subjunctive trigger. I'm looking for the house that faces the park. Busco la casa que da al parque. Specific, no subjunctive trigger. Let's see if you can do this one. I'm looking for a house that has three bedrooms. You ready? Busco una casa que tenga tres recámaras, dormitorios, cuartos, alcoba. There are a lot of different words for bedroom. I just stuck recámara in there on my example because that's one we use in Mexico a lot. You just put whatever you like in there, okay? Most important thing is, is that you used tenga. It comes from the verb tener, to have, and it's in the subjunctive mood. Why? because it's a non-specific thing, right? We're talking about a house. Let's tweak the sentence a little bit and talk about a specific house. Go ahead and translate this one. I'm looking for the house that has three bedrooms. Busco la casa que tiene tres recámaras, dormitorios, habitaciones, alcobas, cuartos, piezas, whatever. Remember, you're gonna stick whatever you want in there. So did you get tiene? Talking about a specific house, no subjunctive trigger. I know some viewers are going to ask me why I'm using busco for I'm looking for instead of estoy buscando. I could use estoy buscando, the present progressive, or I could just use busco, the plain old present tense like I'm doing here. Um, sometimes we as English speakers have some trouble grasping this because in English, we use the present progressive in sentences like this. I'm looking for the book. You wouldn't say... I look for the book. What are you doing, Paul? I look for the book. You might sound kind of like Tarzan or something, or like English wasn't your first language. But in Spanish, the present tense is often used to express things in progress. So I'm looking for the book could be either estoy buscando el libro or busco el libro. Since estoy buscando mirrors English a lot more closely, English speakers tend to overuse the present progressive when speaking Spanish. So uh, try not to do that, okay? I'll do some other videos and go into more detail about that. All right, I went off on a big tangent there, so let's get back on topic. So far, we've only been talking about things. Now let's talk about people. Um, basically, the same rules apply, all right? Take a look at the sentence. I'm looking for a carpenter. Busco un carpintero. Pretty easy, right? I'm looking for a carpenter who knows how to build furniture. Uh-oh, what happened here? So we have our looking for a carpenter. Is this a specific carpenter? No. So we have busco un carpintero. And in our English, we have who knows, right? But think of it more as that knows how to do something. So you'll know to use que and not quien. So we have busco un carpintero que knows how to. Hmm. If you know how to do something, do we use saber or conocer? We use saber. Saber is to know facts or know how to do something. And we could use saber plus infinitive when we say how does somebody know something. But this is a subjunctive trigger. So we're going to have to use saber in the subjunctive. And it's irregular. Hopefully you've got your conjugations down. If you don't, remember, I have a video about that. So it becomes sepa. Busco un carpintero que sepa construir muebles or hacer muebles, make furniture. Now, what if I'm talking about a specific carpenter and I want to say, I'm looking for the carpenter that knows how to make furniture, right? How would that be? Busco al carpintero que sabe construir muebles. So a couple things happened here. Um, not only do we change it to el carpintero, we have an a ah in there. What, where did that come from? Well, that's our personal a. Ah. It got put in there and it melded with el to become al. Busco al carpintero. Now, when I was just talking about a carpenter, any old carpenter, I didn't stick the personal a in there. And it's common not to use the personal a after certain verbs like buscar when we're talking about a non-specific person, okay? You'll get a feel for that as time goes on. I'm going to give you two great sentence starters now for your word list since we're talking about it anyway. And our first one is... I'm looking for someone who knows, or right, that knows 
how to do something and you're just going to plug it in. I love these types of formulas. So we're going to have busco alguien que sepa. I'm looking for someone that knows. Now you'll notice I have a little ah in there. That's a personal ah with parentheses around it and it's optional. And I just want to be clear here that it's not my personal opinion if the ah can be there or not. That actually comes from the Real Academia Española and their Diccionario Panhispánico de Duda. So they are one of the leading authorities on what's Spanish and what's correct and what's not. And according to uh, their dictionary, with the verbs buscar, encontrar, hallar, necesitar, or tener, the preposition a can be left in or left out, your choice. So back to that sentence starter, busco alguien que sepa, I'm looking for someone knows how to, boom, and I can start to stick things in there. Busco alguien que sepa cocinar, I'm looking for someone who knows how to cook. Busco alguien que sepa hablar danés, I'm looking for someone who knows how to speak Danish. Whatever you want to stick in there, super useful sentence starter. Now, this one is equally useful. I'm looking for someone who can do something, right? Not necessarily knows how to do it, but is able to do it. That's the difference. So we're going to be using the verb poder. Busco alguien que pueda. And then we just drop in infinitives. I'm looking for someone who can whatever. Busco alguien que pueda ayudarme con esto. I'm looking for someone who can help me with this, whatever this is. Busco alguien que pueda limpiar la casa. I'm looking for someone who can clean the house. Busco alguien que pueda pintar la casa. I'm looking for someone who can paint the house. Whatever you want to stick in there. So these are basically just plug and play phrases. My favorite. You want to take a stab at one of them? Uh, let's try this one. I'm looking for someone who knows how to play the guitar. You ready? Busco alguien que sepa tocar la guitarra. Did you get that? It's not that hard, right? Now you could have used estoy buscando. Estoy buscando alguien que sepa tocar la guitarra. Whatever you like. How about this one? I'm looking for someone who can work weekends, who is able to work weekends. You ready? Busco alguien que pueda trabajar los fines de semana. Did you get it? Not that hard. Or you could have said, Estoy buscando alguien que pueda trabajar los fines de semana. Well, that's it for the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, just do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And until next time, hasta luego.